Welcome back to Animal of the Week, or rather Prehistoric Animal of the Week, because why limit ourselves to the mere fraction of life that is around today compared to the monumental number of species that have all lived and died long before us? This week we are looking at the genus Maolania due to the huge recent interest there seems to be in turtles, or at least turtle-like animals. Maolania is an extinct member of Testudinata that lived in Australasia from around 16 million years ago to very recently in geological terms, potentially going extinct just 3,000 years ago. Although it might look a lot like a turtle, it's technically a stem group turtle, since it is positioned just outside Testudines, the group including all living turtles, but this is something I'll come back to in a bit. There are thought to be potentially up to five species within the Maolania genus, however there are three in particular that have some issues. M. damalippi remains unconfirmed as a species, as though over 400 bones were found at a single site in Vanuatu, the key indicator bones such as the horns, the skull and the carapace are missing. This means it could potentially be a different genus of turtle and not part of Maolania. Another potential species is even more tenuous. The Wyandot species is only known from a few vertebra and horn cores and so has been assigned to the more established species of M. platyceps, but this could be a new species due to their larger size and different location. M. mckayi also might just be M. platyceps, as again it's only known from a few horn cores and limbs, but it was found on the remote Walpole Island, far away from platyceps, so scientists say that this notable geographical distance could validate distinguishing it as a species. The name Maolania has a confusing origin. It was first described by infamous British paleontologist Sir Richard Owen, creator of the name Dinosauria, and he annoyingly didn't elaborate much on the name. Richard Owen did however also name Megalania, the large extinct monitor lizard from Pleistocene Australia. It is thought that he may have named them deliberately in a similar manner, as if Megalania is said by Owen to mean Great Roma, then Myelania means Lesser Roma. This is despite the fact that Lanius means Butcher in Latin, and so it could mean Lesser Butcher, but that doesn't really make sense in context, as he intended Megalania to mean Great Roma not Great Butcher. Owen described the genus in 1886 after receiving fossil bones in 1884 of the species Platyceps, which then obviously became the type species for the genus. He originally described the bones as two separate species, with M minor being the other, however this has now been absorbed into Platyceps. Poet and explorer Robert Fitzgerald is the man who sent Owen the fossils all the way from Lord Howe Island off the coast of Australia. Despite Fitzgerald telling Owen that what he was sending him were turtle fossils, Owen believed them to be of a lizard which is why he chose the name relating to Megalania. He believed Myelania to be a smaller island relative of the larger mainland lizards. As I mentioned, Maolania lived in Australasia. This obviously doesn't narrow it down, and with maybe five different species and many of those species only being thought of as different species because of the location they were found in, it makes sense to simply list off the fossil sites. M. platyceps, the type species that has already been discussed, comes from Lord Howe Island. Wyandotte has also been discussed and its location is in the name, having come from Wyandotte Crete in Queensland, mainland Australia. M. McKay, as mentioned, comes from Walpole Island in New Caledonia, and M. Damalippi from Vanuatu, specifically an archaeological site called Toma on the island of Afate. Finally, M. Brevicolis comes from the Northern Territory of mainland Australia near a place called Camfield Station. Camfield Station to Afate is obviously an enormous range, and there are various theories on how they became so widely dispersed. Obviously not all the sites are from the same time. The oldest is Brevicolis, which was found at a Miocene site. Damalippi comes from a Holocene site, making it the youngest of all. Platyceps, Wyandotte and Mackay all came from the Pleistocene sites. One theory relates to the now submerged continent of Zealandia. It is thought that maybe the three island varieties descended from a much earlier species that had been widespread across Zealandia. When it submerged 23 million years ago, they would have become isolated on islands and speciation took place. That species could have been the Miocene Brevicolis, but then one might expect their fossils to also be found on some remote islands, but they have only been found in Australia. The timing is also wrong, as the earliest found Brevicolis fossils come from only around 16 million years ago. The other glaring issue is that if the Wyandotte species is just platyceps, then it's impossible that an earlier species that got to Lord Howe Island before Zealandia sank evolved into exactly the same species as in the Northwest Territory of Australia. The other more likely explanation for the island varieties is rafting. It's it is entirely possible even with the current distance over the ocean, and when we consider the millions of years ago the sea levels were lower, the ocean distance would have been much shorter. It seems like a reasonable
reasonable explanation. It would also explain the similarities between the Wyandotte species and Platyceps, especially the size difference in the mainland Wyandotte species, as it is very large, but the island-dwelling Platyceps evolved to be smaller. A final theory is that Maolania might have been semi-aquatic and swam to the islands. This however seems unlikely due to the size and weight of these creatures, coupled with no evidence from their limb or tail fossils from any species discovered that show any sort of aquatic adaptations. In all likelihood, the heavy carapace, its tail club and big horns would have made it unsuited to swimming, especially these distances. The very large and heavy horns, coupled with a restrictive carapace for protection, all suggest that Maolania species would have had to feed through grazing. It is unlikely that they would have been able to lift their heads at an angle that would have allowed for them to eat anything higher than what was on the floor or just above it. Fallen fruit, ferns and any edible flowers would have probably been the preferred food of Maolania. This is assuming though that species like Damalippi are actually Maolania. If they are actually more modern turtles, then they would most likely have been omnivores and fed upon jellyfish as well. Males from many modern tortoise species fight each other when it comes to mating season, and it's thought that perhaps Maolania species were similar. Their large horns, club tail, and impressive carapace all seem to suggest that they are suited not just to self-defense, but to active aggression against each other. Their large horns may also have served as a form of display to attract females or intimidate male rivals into submission. It is thought that perhaps the traces of Platyceps eggs have been found on Lord Howe Island. They were found to be laid in sand on a beach quite like living turtles, but the much larger size of them ruled out any other prehistoric turtle species. It is interesting that though probably terrestrial, these animals sought out beaches to lay eggs, most likely because their eggs may have required a very moist environment to survive. As I mentioned before, the evolutionary position of Maolania is pretty interesting, as it is not actually a true turtle in the technical sense. Previous research on the classification of these reptiles published in the 1980s and 1990s found Maolaniidae, the family including all the Maolania species and their relatives, to be positioned as the sister group to one of the two major groupings of living turtles, the Cryptodires, the other living group being the Pleurodires. However, since the 2000s, studies have mostly been in agreement that actually the Maolaniids are not closely related to the Cryptodires nor the Pleurodires, and instead they are actually positioned outside of Testudines, as their own branch called the Maolaniforms. This therefore means that the Maolaniids are not true crown group turtles, since the definition of a crown group is that it includes all currently alive members of a group, and back to their most recent common ancestor. So the Maolaniids would fall outside this, and therefore they are technically stem group turtles. But in this case, the crown group and stem group classification is really quite trivial, since the crown group would also have been extended to include the Maolaniids had they survived just a few thousand years longer to the present day. Still, quite an interesting technicality, and of course the crown and stem group concept is still generally very useful in explaining the evolutionary relationships of extinct organisms to living ones. Anyway, since quite a few different species of Maolania have been described, and the genus itself spans a significant length of deep time, the evolution of this stem turtle has actually been fairly well studied. The Maolaniforms first appeared in the early Cretaceous, during the age of dinosaurs, being known from fossils found in Patagonia and Australia. Then, strangely, the fossil record of these stem turtles is restricted to just Patagonia from the late Cretaceous until the middle of the Eocene epoch, about 40 to 45 million years ago. Then, during this time, the fossil record of these species picks up again, but after the end of the Eocene, about 34 million years ago, until recent times, all the Maolaniforms are found in Australasia, apparently going extinct in South America due to deteriorating climate conditions as the world underwent a cooling period. The Maolaniids may have survived in Australasia despite going extinct elsewhere because of the northward drifting of the continent, meaning that despite the cooling trend of the time, between the Eocene and the Oligocene epochs, Australasia was buffered due to its continued movement northward toward lower latitudes. The closest related genus to Maolania is a genus called Wakalania, named in 1992 from remains found in Queensland, and notable for lacking the elongated horns of Maolania species. It is also the oldest named Maolaniid fossil found
found in Australasia. Though the remains of even older, Eocene-aged ones are known to be too fragmentary to scientifically name. The only other currently named Australasian Maolaniid is Ningemis, also described in 1992 when a species originally included within Maolania, Maolania oweni, was found distinct enough to be its own genus, and so was renamed Ningemis oweni. What does Ningemis mean? Well, in that 1992 paper, the paleontologist describing it explains that it comes from the Latin emis meaning turtle, and ninja, in an allusion to that totally rad, fearsome foursome epitomising shelled success. Proof that some paleontologists do have a sense of humour, I swear. Thanks to the elaborate scales, horns, and other structures of the skulls of Maolaniids, the evolution of the different species has been relatively easy to track. Among the Australasian Maolaniids, Ningemis formed the outgroup to Wakalania and Maolania, with Ningemis having scale and horn anatomy more like that of some of the basal Maolaniids and Wakalania and Maolania possessing many shared characteristics of the skull that unite them as close relatives. Gaffnilania, named in 2015 based on fossils found in Patagonia, may also prove to be quite closely related to Maolania and Wakalania, but its exact position is still uncertain. As with most extinctions, the death of this genus was probably caused by a culmination of factors. Firstly, rising sea levels after the end of the glacial periods may have reduced the landmass of islands they lived upon, resulting in populations too large for their islands. Considering these were grazing animals, they probably required a decent amount of land each to be able to feed off. Smaller islands result in all sorts of issues from food scarcity to disease spreading faster through more densely packed populations, all resulting in a smaller gene pool, which then makes them more susceptible to disease in the first first place. The other potential factor may have been human interactions, at least for the Holocene species Damalipi. The archaeological site where their bones were found had human remains buried below the Maolania ones. It is thought that they may only date from roughly 3,000 years ago, so if Damalipi is indeed a Maolania species, then it could be that they were hunted by humans to extinction. Indeed, the evidence from the archaeological site is consistent with the butchering of the Maolaniid remains, since the bones mostly comprise limb bones, while skull remains and tail vertebra are absent, and shell fragments are very rare. This might therefore suggest that the reptiles were killed and cut up somewhere else, and the meatiest bits of their bodies, the legs and associated parts, were taken back to the settlement. It may not have been anything as direct as hunting though, simply having humans occupy their habitat and introduce invasive species, or compete for the fruit and plants they fed on, or even spread disease to them, are all possibilities as well. Thank you for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you'd like to learn more about our world, its history, and the wonderful life that surrounds us all, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you think we deserve it, and if you'd like to see more from us.